Hi, my name is Hunter Freeman, and I'm working on an IDE. I'm making it using C Sharp and Blazor. So, the IDE has a publicly available demo. I run the IDE in the browser, and then I just fake the file system. So, if you would like to look at the demo, there is going to be a link to the demo uh, in the description of this video. So the, de the demo is currently open on the left side of my monitor. And then on the right side of my monitor, I have opened the publicly available uh, Git repository. So if I full screen this for a moment, we can see luthitis.ide is the repo name. And inside of here, there are a few projects. For example, there's luthitis.common, then there's dot text editor, and then so on. Well, the dot common and dot text editor are the focus of what I'm doing today. I want to make a video for each one of those and go through the documentation on how you can add it as a NuGet package to your project. Uh, so this video will be luthitis.common, and then I'll put up another video that will be Luthitis.text editor, and I will link to the text editor video as well in the description. So I scroll down, and there's a little GIF here that shows you it running natively on my operating system using Fotino.blazer. Runs on Linux, Windows, and Mac. Uh, here's a link to the demo. I click open that. The demo does not work on. Uh, mobile devices currently. Cloning is super simple. You just uh, grab the link and then clone it. Uh, once you finish cloning it and then you open the .sln, you would just run luthitis.ide.portino.csproj. Uh, and if you don't feel comfortable running that natively uh, because I'm just a random person on the internet and you don't want to run my source code uh, I completely understand that there's also web versions of it as well which would be the WASM and the server side in which the WASM and the server side are what I'm using for the demo so that I'm faking the file system otherwise the Fotino one will use your real file system as I mentioned there's the NuGet packages Okay, I will go through adding the luthitis.common NuGet package. So I'm on the GitHub repository, and then as I scroll down a bit towards the bottom of the page, there's this uh, title for NuGet packages. Then there are links to the individual readme.md uh, for each one of those libraries, so to speak. So the common library, I can click on it and then it will take me uh, to the readme.md for that library. These are all in the same repo. It's just in a different uh, directory. So here's the readme for luthitis.common and this would be all that uh, resizability logic and the dialogues, notifications, things of that nature is what I uh, have in this. So scroll down further. For the getting started, there's going to be a link to this video once it's uploaded. And then after that is a markdown format for the documentation. So I'll open up the installation.md. We can see the version that this documentation pertains to is version 1.4.0. And I wonder if I uh, have a link here so we can see what the most recent version is. And there it is. Uh, the most recent version is 1.4.0. So the documentation is up to date with this version. 
when it comes to the documentation, the source code for it, that is to say this little, this uh, tutorial that I sort of wrote up, you can get the source code for the tutorial that I wrote up by clicking on this link here. Uh, so the .NET solution was made by following the steps described here. So the complete result can be found there. If you would like to look at that, you click on it. This takes you to the .sln. And then if I look at the uh, directory that I'm in, we have a Razor library. We have a server side application and we have a WASM application. So if you want an example of WASM usage, you can check that out. If you want to see server side, you check that out. Uh, let's see, I closed the wrong link. Okay, so there's lots of goals here. Uh, I don't uh, know if it would be helpful for me to read them out. Uh, so let's just go straight to the steps. So th the first step is to reference the NuGet package itself. So I'll open up Visual Studio and this is just a default Blazor server application. So I can right click on my dependencies for this Blazor app one for the project, right click on dependencies, manage NuGet packages, and when I go to browse inside of this search bar, I could type in here luthitus.common. Uh, and if I just type luthitus, you'll see the other NuGet packages as well. So grab the common NuGet package, give that an install, hit apply, I accept. Okay. And then if I double click on the CS proj, we see it here, 1.4.0. Okay. For a way to install, okay. The link, okay, register the services. So you need to go to the file that you wanna register your services, uh, that you wanna put that logic. I'll just click copy uh, get that little code snippet and then I'll put everything in program.cs. Maybe you break it off into a extension method, uh, that works as well. So above where it says var app equals builder.build, get some more space. I'll just paste in what I got from the documentation. We can see I provide you with the using statements that you need in case you don't have something that will automatically add them for you. Uh, Visual Studio in this case automatically added uh, this top one. So I can take as well the using fluxer is needed there. So I just uncomment that one and move it up. Let's see. We need to specify whether we are running a WASM application or a server-side application. Uh, internally, I also specify whether I'm using a Fotino app, but for most people, it's just gonna be WASM or server-side. So I put a period after my hosting kind, and then it says, uh, it's just an enum f12 to it and we can see server side wasm botino unit testing uh, i just need to know what hosting model you're using so that i could set things up appropriately for that use case so in this situation i'm using server side so i just uncomment that part and then if you want you can delete the other part and 
I'm passing in the, the uh, hosting information to this extension method that is provided from the common library. So this would be, instead of services, it would be in this uh, scenario, builder.services. So let me put that there. And return, okay. And we're not returning it, uh, we're instead just invoking it. So we're going to invoke the extension method, and we're going to invoke add Fluxer. Uh, Fluxer is a state management library that is used internally. Okay. Reference the CSS. So go to that file, and for server side, that's pages, and then underscore layouts.cshtml for most templates, that is to say. And you can decide where you want to put this link. I like to put it prior to the uh, CSS code behinds uh, being added. Reference the JavaScript. This one needs to go after where you add the blazor.server.js or the WASM version of that. In app.razor, I need to render the store initializer, which comes from Fluxer. So Fluxer, the state management library, needs us to add this. That's an app.razor. Paste that in there. Uh, and there's a link here to the Fluxer repo. In main layout, I need to render the Luthitus common initializer component. And that's going to render out the notifications, the dialogues, things of that nature. Uh, that's where the rendering for all of that occurs in this initializer. So we go ahead and copy that. Go to shared, main layout. Paste that in there. This note is just related to the fact that if I had a CSS class on this top level div, sort of for my website uh, in its entirety, it's all encompassed by this div. So the CSS would cascade and then influence the Luthitus common initializer as well. Uh, that's, that, that, that's what this blob of text is saying. Uh, but either way, you'll end up rendering it, whether you put it on line 5 or what's currently 7.5 or wherever. Okay. So, if I try to build this, I'll see if it builds, and then I'll go to the next tutorial. Uh, let me do that again. At the very bottom, there's a next tutorial link. It's just usage.md. Okay, it's all built. Again, the link to the source code. So we want to add a light and dark theme. So we can create code behind for main layout.razor. So shared main layout dot razor I realize there's a refactor uh, that I could do here all you have to do is just type inside of your dot razor file you can just type at code and then control period and then the refactor for extracting block to code behind this then goes and makes your code behind. So let's see. File scope. Uh, 
your main layout is inheriting layout component base. Uh, it says to inject the iApp options service. So I'll copy that code blob and add it in. Here we see we could just uh, inject that. We need to subscribe to the state changes of the iApp option service. So whenever a user changes their theme, the website will re-render. So what I said to do here is inherit, uh, specifically implement I disposable, I disposable, and then when you hit control period. Okay, we're, we are already inheriting layout component base, so that means that we would, would put a, a uh, comma. That's all that error was. Control period, uh, and then implement the interface. So we are inheriting layout component base, and then we put a comma for the iDisposable implementation to be added. I need to subscribe and unsubscribe. I want my app not to compile until I have unsubscribed, just so I don't have any chance of making a memory leak accidentally. So I'll write the unsubscribe first, and then leave it in a state that won't compile, and then I'll be forced to uh, make sure that that's there and working in a moment. So how do you do the subscribe? You need to... Okay. Override on initialized, which is a Blazor lifecycle method. Inside here, we can subscribe to the state changes. So it says to add this line of code here. And specifically in Visual Studio, if I delete this uh, plus equals and beyond, I can then hit the space button, plus equals tab, and it will autocomplete this event handler for me. If you're not in uh, some kind of editor that can autocomplete that, then the documentation has it uh, just immediately below right here, the uh, event handler written out. You can copy that. Now we can go ahead and fix the dispose method. Copy and paste the event handler name. Make sure that these are the same. Yep. And fix the property name there. And now we need to re-render uh, any time that this event handler is invoked. So that would mean we await invoke async state has changed. And when I wrote the await and then hit space, Visual Studio refactored the method to be async You'll have to actually type the uh, async out if it doesn't refactor that for you. And you keep it void because it's an event handler. And then that's... Yep. So now we want a select uh, HTML element where the various themes are being displayed and then the user can click on it and then get a drop down and pick the theme that they want. So I go to sh I go to main main layout dot razor and then I'll scroll to the top this part is just saying where I'm going to put it uh, but specifically this part here uh, a lot of the components already exist for you. So 
this is saying input app theme is a Blazor component that will do exactly what we're talking about. And it already exists. So we'll just render this out to the screen and it will give us that select drop down. Uh, specifically where I ended up putting it was within the top row but that's not an important detail where you put it uh, because if you have the event handler set up it'll just do that communication of the event okay So at this point, when you run the application, you can go ahead and interact with the select dropdown, but nothing's going to happen because we haven't interpolated the CSS onto a HTML element that then cascades the CSS variables. So I, I go in detail here and then I do a right click inspect and kind of go through how you can see all the uh, CSS changing, but we're not actually making use of it. So just real quick, you click on the drop down, and you can pick your theme. So let's actually make use of the theme. In main layout, we need to locate where we want the CSS class to be put. Uh, in my mind, that would be the topmost div in your main layout so that your website gets all this CSS variables. So for this top level element, this div here, it's got a class of page and I'm just adding to it the app option service dot theme CSS class string. So at sign as well. And I go into detail just about how uh, things are actually working. And then we just need to add such that we change the color of something. So I have some CSS here. Uh, I'll copy and paste this into the .css code behind. And this will just set the top row's background color to the luth underscore tertiary background color CSS variable. Then the color is the foreground, uh, the variable that is there for that, and so on. It does that with the content as, as well, but it uses the primary for that guy. So give this a run. And here we go. Uh, so I pick uh, dark clone, and then we could see that the top row became this kind of uh, really dark gray color, and then the body gets this uh, blackish color with the white text. And then I swap to the light theme, we get the light background color with the black text, and then this uh, brownish. Uh, color for the top row. So that was the installation of the luthitis.common nougat package. Thank you and goodbye.